We've just celebrated the resurrection. Happy Easter. But how do we know that the resurrection actually happened, and what does it really matter? That's what we're going to be talking about today on Ignition. Welcome to the show. I'm your host, Dr. Chris Bergwald, and we want to set your faith ablaze so that you might live the adventure that comes from a relationship with Jesus Christ. Before we get into the topic of the resurrection, we want you to know that we love listener feedback. So if you, have, if you have questions about today's episode or if you have ideas for future episodes, please contact us. The easiest way to do so is by email, and the address is ignition at sfcatholic.org. And again, again ignition at sfcatholic.org. Once again, I am joined in studio by Renee Kranz. Hi, Renee. Your favorite person. Happy Hi. Easter. Happy Easter to you. I just skipped you. over that. <laughs> I know. Ignore um, it. <laughs> so, uh, introduce yourself briefly to our audience in case they don't know you. How about, I'm Renee Kranz. Okay. I'm the editor of the Bishop's Bulletin, interim director for the Catholic Diocese, uh, married to Ryan for 18 years. Um, I'm a middle child. Have I said, mentioned yep. that before? <sighs> Shoot. Uh, what do you have to say for yourself, Renee? I, <laughs> I can't think of any. <laughs> Are you a credit Catholic? Yes. Lifelong Catholic. Yes, I am. Were you ever away from the church? No. Okay. No. I mean, in college, That's... there was a couple Sundays where I'm like, eh, I'm going to sleep couple Sundays, in. but nothing but no. extended. No. Good for you. Did you go to confession for those? By the way? I think so, but I don't remember. <laughs> am I supposed to remember everything I'm I went to confession Just for? kidding. Just kidding. So, um, <sighs> we are celebrating Easter week. Yes. Easter week. We're not, we're the focus is not going to be Easter week, but what's distinctive about Easter week? Do you know? What's distinct? Um, uh, well, I think there could be a few things, but uh, I do know, I noticed looking at the calendar is like, there's no feasts celebrated. Correct. Anywhere. So, so if, if Easter falls and there's, there's even, even the, the, well, yeah, um, the, the bigger solemnities, if yeah. they happen to fall, they're always, they're pushed back either, either actually Holy week or Easter week. Right. They're pushed into the second week of Easter. Yeah. Um, the Gloria is said every day yep. at mass. This, so this is the octave we're, we're in the Easter octave. So liturgically we still celebrate it, um, with almost as much joy and exuberance, uh, as we did Easter Sunday. Yeah. And of course the season lasts till Pentecost. So, um, 50 days beginning to mm-hmm. end. And if you are saying the rosary at church, please use the glorious mysteries. Yes, switch. <laughs> you probably pray the sorrowful mysteries all of Lent, and yes. it's please time switch. To switch. <laughs> um, so, but so what we're in the midst of celebrating this octave, this season, what we celebrated at the Easter vigil and on um, uh, Easter Sunday, of course, is the resurrection mm-hmm. of Jesus Christ from the dead. So, uh, before we get into the, the questions that I teased at the top of the show, Renee, what exactly is a resurrection? Uh, it is a coming back to life from the dead. Okay. She says with a grimace. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of waiting for myself to be wrong. <laughs> so, let me, let me put it to you this way. What's, um, so, coming back to life. Yeah. So Lazarus was resurrected. Right? Well, no. Okay, so a <laughs> resurrection then, okay, since you say that, under your own power. How about that? Ah, okay. Because Lazarus was raised from the dead by Jesus. La- right. And anybody else come to mind that way? Um, anybody else? The, the, oh. the son of the widow of Nain. Oh, yeah. The daughter of Jairus. The... Mm-hmm. Um, synagogue official so jesus mm-hmm. raised three people from the dead during okay. his public ministry um in the gospels or sorry acts of the apostles we read about up the apostles we do. <laughs> blanking you right now on exactly who it is <laughs> but there's other reasons and as a matter of fact throughout history this miracle has happened since then uh-huh. so there yeah. have been times did you know that no, but I absolutely believe that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're saying that like either I yeah. You I think it's happened don't... in our own family actually. Really? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, so it still happened. Now, but none of those are resurrections. They are right. resuscitations. So just as people are okay. resuscitated yep. at the hospital, yep. Jesus and the apostles and um saints have been able to resuscitate, bring people back from the dead. Okay. The question is were they mostly dead or completely dead? Right. <laughs> That's a, that's I think a, Lazarus was pretty dead um, <laughs> from the accounts. <laughs> right. Uh, 
If there are fragrances emitting, I think you're mostly dead. What makes people want to live so much? What makes people want to live? True love. Okay. Are you, this is all a is Princess it? Bride reference that I think is. I have not seen that movie. Oh my gosh! That's all right. Sorry. All right, we should stop the tape and make you, but we won't. Okay, so um, the, it's a resuscitation when somebody's brought back from the dead, which is different than. So think about now Jesus coming back from the dead, which we in the resurrection that we just celebrated. What's different about Lazarus? And his coming back from the dead. And Jesus, you already said one thing. So Jesus came back under his own power. Anything else come to mind? Well, he came back with a glorified body. Right? Yep. Yep. Uh, okay, what does that mean? Well, you uh, use the term. You must have some all, idea. It's all healed and perfect, yep. I guess. Yep. Although his wounds are still wounds there, are but still they're there. not like bloody wounds yep. now. Yep. Um, what can he do? What can a glorified he can do body do? Anything. <laughs> Walk through walls. Uh, appear in more places and in, in multiple places at once. Um, yeah, whatever he wants. Right. He's God. So you, you can. Right. <laughs> but a glorified body. <laughs> yes. It's, it's because of his glorified body that he's also. So so um, the the the. Is he still technically human here? Oh yeah. Okay. It's a it's his well, real he is body. all the time. So what am not, I saying? Yeah yeah yeah. The incarnation does not end. <laughs> With the Sorry. resurrection, Please heresy. <laughs> um, the the strong speculation is it will very very great likelihood is we will be able to do the same things right. with our glorified bodies at the end of time. Um, that but if that by the grace cool. of God, yeah, just to be able to go here <laughs> yeah. and there and yeah. Um, what else is noticeably different about so you do Jesus under His own power? A uh, glorified body. I, Actually, it's another aspect of the glorified body. Did I, Lazarus die again? Yes. Oh, sure. Will Jesus die? Again? No. No. So a resuscitate, uh, resurrection is not just being resuscitated from the dead. We, in pop culture, we talk about, oh, they so-and-so was they resurrected so-and-so. But a re- resurrection is where you actually did die, and then you come back... Um, with the same body, but different. Um, it's glorified now. It's the heavenly body. So mm-hmm. Jesus actually has a body. He right. invites Thomas to touch the wounds. You mm-hmm. talked about, you can see the wounds. He eats fish to show right. uh, the apostles that he's not um, a ghost. Right. You couldn't just see the fish going down. Right. <laughs> no, no, correct. So so um, uh, uh, in, in the resurrection... Um, Jesus comes back from the dead, but to a different kind of existence. Right. He will not die again. He is able to do, do these things because he now has a glorified body. Uh, Lazarus did not come back. The, the son of the widow of Nain, did come, they did not come back. The daughter of Jairus did not come back with a glorified body. They right. were resurrected in the early life and they would die again. Right. Jesus will not. Okay. Um, in the resurrection, Jesus has conquered death definitively. So he died in sacrifice um, for our sins. But death now, after the resurrection, no longer has power over him. Right. Um, What's next, Dr. B? How do we know that that's all not just a fairy tale and a fable and a Mm -hmm. myth? That's a nice story, but that'd be great. But really, Mm -hmm. have you ever met somebody who's resurrected? (laughs) That's, you know, I'm glad you asked that because that's a good question. I know it is. I, I know. I mean, I know some different things that prove and and support the resurrection and there's lots of support out there both in the bible and outside of the bible um the romans really needed him to be dead so right if they crucified him they really need so him to well, be why dead. are you saying that right now like how is that relevant um, to this question because if he really didn't rise from the dead if he was actually dead they they would have proved it Right. So, um because otherwise they're in big trouble right so so there's <laughs> there's one theory out there so you can um, and we still get them. It was especially like in the late eighties through the nineties. Every year, the major, uh, you know, remember, new, remember um, news magazines, Renee? Yeah. There was these things made from paper that you used. To... <laughs> they're like they're still around, but you know, you don't subscribe to no. Time, Newsweek, those sorts of things. Easter, you'd always have these. They would interview Did these Jesus biblical really scholars, rise from the dead? right? Exactly. <laughs> and so you, you hear all these crazy, like people who are really, really intelligent, come up with really dumb ideas mm-hmm. to try to explain away the resurrection. Right. 
um, because they just, oh, that's just something for children. Right. So um, th- one of them is that Jesus didn't actually die on the right. cross. So that's kind of what you're, that he didn't die. So when he quote unquote rose again, that, well, he was just nursed back, to, nursed back to health because he yeah. never actually died. Right. But that, that somebody no. who says that has, has no idea what crucifixion yeah. The Romans were very good at crucifixion. They were very good at crucifixion. <laughs> very practiced. Very practiced at killing people yes. in this torturous yes. way. And it was important that that, per- that, that person died because yeah. you were in big trouble if, if they you didn't. didn't do right, it right. Right, right, <laughs> So, So that's one thing. So, so Jesus actually would have died on the cross. But still, how do we know he came actually came back mm-hmm. and that it's not a myth or a fable mm-hmm. or a fairy tale? That's another... Um, there are lots of reasons, but one is the uh, um, the Romans who were guarding the tomb. The what was it, two of them or whatever. There's lots of things. The Romans guarding the tomb would not have uh, allowed that to happen without them knowing it. Allowed what to happen? Allow, allowed him to leave the tomb. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not making sense right now. <laughs> um, there's things like. The first witnesses to the empty tomb were women, which women held no, like, um, what do I want to say? Help me. Credibility. Credibility. They, they, have, they yeah. were no, they had no credibility, credibility in law or, right, right. or as witnesses. So what, everything so, that you're speaking to right now is you're, you're, what you're you're talking about is why the gospel accounts are historically are reliable. Right. Why, right. Why they're right. worthy of Are you asking trust. me a different question? Uh, no, I'm just like, it's exp- I asked you how we know oh. that the resurrection happened, which you are answering by saying, because well, because the gospels say himself. it and how do we know, why can we trust right. the gospels? Well, right. because, and the, the, your, the yeah. examples, it, so like with the, with the one you chose with the women, it would have made no, if, if the gospel writers were, were writing a fictional account, mm-hmm. they would it makes no sense yeah. to, um, make women the first witnesses right. because as you said, they had no legal standing. Right. Like if they were, th- they, they, they were never brought forward as trustworthy witnesses mm-hmm. in law. That's totally unfair, but that but was the cultural was. reality. Yeah. Yeah. So it wouldn't, if, if you're going to write a, a fake thing where, Hey, d- the guy, Jesus of Nazareth, he came back from the dead. Oh, and really? Peter saw it first. Right. That's what they would have said. Exactly. Yeah. Right. But they didn't. They talk mm-hmm. about women. Um, what else? When you think about how else do we know? Well, he was seen by many people, thousands. Well, again, that's what the gospels say. Yes. But okay. 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 So what do you want from me? No, no, no. You're... <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of people claim to have seen him. Well, do you believe everything that you read on the internet, Renee, or see on TV, <laughs> or read in books? Uh, uh, why, well, maybe they're just lying. Maybe the apostles were just lying. You should have given me some stuff before the show. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is better. How this do you know? How do you, your your faith rests on the resurrection. We'll get mm-hmm. to that too. Your faith rests on the resurrection. Maybe they were just lying, Renee. Maybe this is all just a sham where you and Bill and I work. It's just, it's just a sham. built on a bunch of hooey. <laughs> you know, I guess, okay. I don't know what kind of answer you want, but for me, when you look at all of the evidence, there's, there's, I don't believe that there's any way to deny it. This is what God has told us and has revealed to us. And so that's where I'm going. So, I'm sticking to it. <laughs> because I said so. <laughs> I said so. Uh, God said so. So, so, so you so. just, just be just, uh, you know, have mercy. <laughs> What do you say to the thing they might have been lying? And you might say, right now, I have no idea. Might say, what? Say that again? How do you know they weren't lying? And and you can say, I don't. Right now, I don't know, Chris. Um, How do you know Right now, lying? I don't know. Okay. How do you know? Thank you. <laughs> Why do people lie, Renee? Actually. Why do you keep asking me questions? <laughs> welcome to edition. If you're just tuning in, <laughs> Renee's ready to beat me. No, I'm Chris Bergwald. You're listening to Ignition. We're talking about uh, the resurrection and Renee Kranz is is dutifully dealing with all my endless questions. I'm taking your place, audience, and I'm not doing a good job. (laughs) (laughs) When when we lie, we just just ordinary every day. Why do we lie? Usually to either cover up something or get out of something. Right. Um, or to get something. Or to get something, yes. So what are the sorts of things that we might lie to get? Mm. Money. Money. <laughs> Power. Yeah. Love. Fame. Fame. Yeah. 
What did the apostle? If the apostles lied, <laughs> they got none of those. <laughs> what if they if they lied? If they made this up, what did they get out of it? You said they got none. Martyrdom. of Martyrdom. They got dead. <laughs> so so because I think you could say, all right, the Bible, the, the gospel accounts, the Acts of the Apostles, whatever, uh, we, the, all the arguments about the historical reliability, we can make those. But when it comes down to it. Uh, if if we just look at the, the, the Bible as history, and then we just look at the historical fact, okay? Mm-hmm. We know that this man named Jesus lived. Yep. Um, we know from biblical, but also extra biblical accounts that he died. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and then we know that within a few years, this religion claimed to be based on him, founded by him, was spreading everywhere. Right. And that there were these individuals who were proclaiming that he rose from the dead. Mm-hmm. Again, why would you make that up if it weren't actually? Because what some people say, Renee, is, well, but that's just what they have been taught. No, but we're talking about the first I w- people who said, I saw him right. Raised from the dead. It's not like today me saying, well, it's because my parents or my priest or my bishop or whatever. I'm, we're talking about the first generation of Christians, mm-hmm. the, the first eyewitnesses. The, there were people who said, I saw Jesus um, raised from the dead. And then others believed them. Mm-hmm. Why would you believe them? Um, maybe they were lying. No, they weren't lying because they got nothing but trouble for their... And for, eternal, for what, and eternal life. But we... <laughs> But, we don't yeah. just for the sake of the argument. Yeah. If it, if Jesus did right, right. from the dead, they to everybody said he, else, it looks like they just got dead. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So, so they got nothing earthly out. The reason why, if Jesus hadn't risen from the dead, um, and they were making it up, it didn't do them any good whatsoever. Right. Why do you would you make up such an outlandish tale for the sake of being tortured to right. death? Right, that makes it, no sense. No, it doesn't. Um. Yeah. So, so I, I think that. For me in particular, because every now and then I think, well, how do we know, Mm -hmm. actually? How do we know? And ultimately, it comes down to this. The trust, trust, the trustworthiness, the trustworthiness <laughs> of the of the original eyewitnesses. Right. Right. Um, things you'll hear about, in addition, he didn't really die or they had mass hallucination. Mm-hmm. Those things don't. That's insane. Th- those things don't happen. There's, a, by the way, um, two really good books um, Carl Olson and I, Carl, I did an interview with Carl in this book a couple of years ago. You can look it up in the ignition archives. Did Jesus re- really rise from the dead? Question and answers about the life, death and resurrection of Jesus. Mm-hmm. So did Jesus really rise from the dead by Carl Olson and then Peter Kraft and father Ronald Tiselli, their handbook of Christian apologetics. They have a whole chapter devoted to going through the resurrection. Hmm. And this is the book that I read during my, my reversion back in 1994, 1995, um, and I just remember they like this is where I for I think this is where I first saw the point about the apostles' testimony of mm-hmm. the resurrection, mm-hmm. um, and it makes really the only like when you when you remove every other option, you have to remain with the one that's left, and the right. one that's left is that they were telling the truth because they did see him. Right, right. And so there's all sorts of other arguments, but that's the one that I want to stick to. But so how do we know it happened? There's more we could say, but what does it matter? Well. It really matters a lot if for those of us who believe what he did, what that does for us. It allows us to also follow basically in that pattern eventually to be saved and be resurrected and have glorified bodies someday. So St. Paul talks, I think it's in one, his first letter to the Corinthians, I think. Um, if Jesus Christ did not rise from the dead, then your faith is in vain. Yeah. So, you know, I'm glad you say that because I have had people say to me, it really doesn't matter if Jesus rose from the dead or not. You can still be a Christian. And I'm like, no, you really can't. No. There would be no point to any of it. So <clears throat> he just died and he was just some prophet who died. Oftentimes, the, the, the folks who say that, not everybody, I don't know that, it's, but, but most people who say that, what they're really getting at is that Christianity is really about Jesus' teachings right. about being kind. Right. And the and fact that he died people. and rose makes no difference. Correct. Right. And that is not. No the case the heart of our faith and we talked about this last week the the most the 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 holiest time of the year is what we just celebrated Mm -hmm. um the passion death and resurrection of jesus christ holy week in particular the sacred triduum so go back and listen to episode 450 folks by the way 450 episodes of ignition wow um so 451 today is this one um 
it makes all the difference in the world because Jesus did not come just to teach us. He came to save us. Right. God didn't have to send his son if he was just trying to give a message. He'd right. been giving messages. Anybody, yeah. The prophets, Moses. Thousands of years. Yeah, for, 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 yeah, for thousands of years. Been giving, but he came to save us by dying on the cross and rising again. Mm-hmm. Could he have done it differently? Yeah, he's sure. God. But this is the way he chose to do it. So, so St. Paul says, if Jesus did not rise from the dead, then your faith is in vain. Mm-hmm. Our Christian faith depends on the resurrection. Right. Because if he didn't rise from the dead, then death has not been conquered. Right. If Jesus didn't rise from the dead, then I'm going to die and that's going to be it lights out. Yeah, right. But Jesus did rise from the dead, showing that we... Um, to whatever our eternal destination, that we will live forever and that we will rise again, uh, hopefully with a glorified body Mm -hmm. for all eternity, but otherwise with a body of damnation also for all eternity. Um, Either way, we will live forever, reunited body and soul for all time. Right. Um, So (laughs) that's in a nutshell, I think, the importance of of what the resurrection is really matters. Yeah. The other day I was actually uh, online doing some research for the next feature story for the, bu- for the bulletin and came across, I can't remember what the website was, but it's a Catholic, I'm using quotes with that Catholic website that talks about that. We folk, they think we focus too much on the uh, the death and resurrection of Jesus. And really it's all about his teachings. <laughs> right. And I was like, no, 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 be careful about the websites you land on. Just can I yeah, just, yeah, just say that's, that? That's very true. <laughs> if it doesn't follow what the church teaching is, just yeah, even move if on, move even along. Even if it's all, calls itself Catholic. <laughs> yep. Just move along. Nothing to see here. Nope. <laughs> yeah. Um, then the fact that if you look at Jesus' teachings, they're really, okay. What were, what did Jesus say are the greatest commandments? To love God uh, with all your mind, soul, and strength. Is that right? Mind, soul, and strength. Whatever. And your neighbor as yourself. Right. And who did? And and, and who gave that answer? Actually, do you remember? Was it uh, Peter? The 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 scribes and Pharisees. Oh, that's right. Jesus said, "What is the greatest commandment?" So they already knew that. They knew that. They just weren't living it out to its right. fullness. He said, "To really live this means you love your enemy." Mm-hmm. To really live this means like he's showing the the full extent of what was already given in the Old Testament, right. what we call the Old Testament mm-hmm. was already given in this in the, in the Jewish scriptures. There's nothing the the revolution in Jesus's teaching is is showing how this applies right to everyone right. Even even the the Romans, even the the Samaritans. In theory, any prophet the could have done that. <laughs> but yeah, but there, there's nothing. I mean, it's already it was already hinted at yeah. in the in in, in the, the prophets and so on. So that's not that isn't what's revolution. The, the challenge has always been with 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 biblical teaching is not so much knowing it, but doing it. Right. Very I true. don't do what I'm supposed to do all the time. Saint Paul said that exactly. Yeah. <laughs> But by the grace of God, as I grow in the life of the sacraments, as I grow in holiness, as I grow in sanctifying grace received when I go to communion, when I go to confession through my baptism and confirmation and all the rest, um, I am able slowly but surely, if, I'm, if, if I uh, follow the Lord's will, to conquer my sins. Mm-hmm. But that cannot happen if Jesus didn't rise from the dead. Right. Right. Um, we are, again, if, if you're... Didn't, if, um, if Jesus Christ did not rise from the dead, your faith is in vain, and we are the foolish, foolish, the, I was saying foolishest, the most foolish, the most foolish of men. Like it's this is this Christianity thing is ridiculous. Mm-hmm. If Jesus did not rise from the dead, so then if you have, let's say you have a maybe you have some other place you want to go. No, 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 no. If you have someone who's really arguing with you about that, um, how do you how do you answer that? Answer what? The, you don't, we don't need that part. Oh, um, well, I think it's what I just, if Jesus didn't rise from the dead, I'm going to die and that's going to be the end. And they say, okay, okay. Well, but does that, the does, that the fit with, does that fit with what Jesus taught too? I mean, how often yeah. do you talk about eternal life yeah. That, yeah. and the kingdom of heaven in heaven, right. not, not on earth? Right. 
if if you, if you look at the Jesus's um, from beginning to end, Jesus's public ministry it ends as a colossal failure. Right. Those who were closest and most committed to him abandon him, and he dies a shameful death on mm-hmm. the cross. That's not. Yeah. A it's not success. a successful preacher there. No, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Except what happened later. Except what happened later. So he did. So it's because he rose from the dead that that validates and affirms and confirms everything that he said and taught Mm -hmm. during his earthly ministry. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, So we just got a couple minutes left. Uh, I'm just turning now. So the so what for today, Renee? So what what does this mean for you and me? All right. So great. Jesus rose from the dead. So what? He opened the door. So what, the for me, so, what so what for me today? Yeah, he opened the door for us to be able to have eternal life. And that's to, when and I die. What's that? And that's, well, that's, that's yeah, when after I die. you die. After I die. Yeah. What does that, I'm not going to die today, I don't think. Oh, well, that might be true, but you don't know that. I don't know that. But, <laughs> but so, it, so, so what for my earthly life? Anything? Well, you yeah, you, ha- you have to... Um, live as Jesus, as God wants us to live, or you'll go to the other place and you don't want to do that. <laughs> and <laughs> knowing that this is not the end, I live differently. Right. Knowing that, that, that the possibility for eternal life with God is there changes how I live today. Um, I'm not, hopefully, and I wasn't too, to be honest, I'm not rattled by a 2020. Right. Um, I live a life of peace and joy Mm -hmm. because I know that death does not have the last word. Um, same, the, 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 it's not easy to say either. It's not right. But, but, um, when the Easter exultant that, that is sung on at the Easter vigil, Mm -hmm. Oh, death, where's thy victory? Oh, death, where's thy sting? And St. Paul says, um, very similar things, if not the exact same thing. Um, death does have a sting, but it is not the definitive sting. Right. Um, it's 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 a pain, but it's not a permanent pain. Mm-hmm. Jesus Christ rose from the dead, so I know now that that possibility is there for me. That I too might ri- ri- rise from the dead by His power, and my and that changes how I live today. Yeah. Praise God. Pra- praise God. Amen. <laughs> and and, and uh, amen. Hallelujah. Yes. <laughs> he is risen. He is risen indeed. And that will wrap up this episode of Ignition. Thanks, Renee, for being here today. Yeah, sure. And putting forth all my questions. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you have any questions, again, the email address is ignition at sfcatholic.org. You can also email us with any ideas for future episodes. And until next time, may God bless you.